What's up everybody? Welcome to my first ever black and white Lightroom Masterclass. Today I'm going to take you through every single panel in Lightroom. I'm going to show you how to use them, what they do, and more importantly, how I use them to be able to achieve this professional level edit. So without further ado, welcome to Lightroom. People are always curious why I have a uh, tape on my camera lens right there and there. Always carry protection. Okay, so you wanna learn how to master these black and white HDR type portrait Lightroom edits in the shortest amount of time possible. Cool, we are going to tackle that in today's video. By the time it's over, you will be able to edit this image a thousand times over with your eyes closed. But first, I'm going to need you to remember three things. That is the process in which we always edit our photos and it's chronological. It goes like this. Correction, color, finishing. C, C, F. First, we correct our photo, then we color our photo, and then finally, we finish the photo. I personally use Lightroom Classic, but this will work on Lightroom Classic or Lightroom CC. Although, if you're still shooting on CC, go back to Classic because it has more features. By the way, the photo that I'm editing in today's video is right down below in the description so that you can download it and edit right alongside me to make sure this works for you. So you can actually see what I'm doing and see it work for you too. So download it, open up Lightroom, and let's begin. <laughs> Side note, if you don't know how to import a photo to Lightroom, go ahead and watch this video first before you come back and rejoin us. So pop quiz, what was the first rule? Correction. And correction is when we actually change the photo to look more like when we saw it. We correct anything that is wrong with the photo. We don't color, we just correct. Our main photo right here and all of our panels on the right, we're gonna start at the top and just work our way down. Even if you're not terrific with Lightroom, you should be able to follow this and get the exact same results, so do not worry. So, step one, correction, fixing it. The first tab is the basics tab, and the basics tab is literally just created for correction. So don't try to color your photo here or make it super edgy. This tab is literally created for you to correct your image. The first thing that we would do is come in and white balance our image, but we're actually not going to do that today. I want you to go to the top and click as shot right here if it's not already selected. That way you know you have the exact same white balance as me and your photo should come out the exact same. The next thing we'll do is switch the panel right here to black and white. Now this is where most people stop their black and white editing, but that is not the black and white we want. This is the black and white we want. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go down to our little tone panel and just start simply balancing out the image. The image is dark. So I'm going to expose it for the shadow side of the face right here. And I think 1.35 feels pretty good. We can always change it later, but that's a good starting point. Next, I'm gonna bring up the contrast slider a little bit, but remember, we don't wanna color or stylize our image here. We're gonna be doing that later in a more advanced way. Contrast, 37. Next, we're going to address the highlights and the whites at the same time and the shadows and the blacks at the same time. Now, with the highlights and the whites, I wanna get them as high as possible without losing any of the actual detail on the cheek, without making it too shiny or, or actually making it way too bright. I honestly feel like negative 30 and positive 28 are a good starting point. We will take the blacks down, maybe negative 10. Uh, what I'm trying to do, again, is make the shadow on my face look like an actual shadow, not an edited shadow. This is looking pretty natural. Now, the key to black and white is texture. You'll see what I mean by the end of this video. I will show you how to do all of the coolest texture techniques, but for right now, let's just take texture up, positive five, and let's go ahead and add maybe 25 or 26 to clarity to start pushing the image in the direction we really wanna take it later, which is that HDR, high dynamic range, the contrasty look. Now, I'm actually going to use the dehaze tool for once in my life. If you just slide it to the left, you see it actually fades out, it hazes your image. So in order to get some of our detail back from the shadows, I'm just gonna do negative 10 on dehaze. And honestly, that little bit goes a long way. Remember that we're just laying groundwork for our future edits. It's like chess. 
but that looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. We are now done with correcting. That is it. Moving on to step number two, color. Now, even though you're in black and white, make no mistake, you are still coloring. You are just coloring your image with thousands of shades of gray. Think about that. Moving into tone curve. So today is very easy. You don't need to worry about what shape to draw. You're just gonna go to the region button right here and it's going to give us sliders down below that pretty much do the exact same thing. So again, we're gonna start stretching out the highlights again, we'll say positive 18. We're gonna stretch out the lights as well. Five or six looks pretty good. Starting to get a little shiny here, but we haven't crossed the threshold yet. This is good. We're going to also stretch out the darks now for the first time, maybe positive 15. Yeah, that's starting to make a difference. And then we'll take the shadows up like positive two. We're gonna do that actually later on, but this, this is starting to look good. Tone curves are done. Now, because we're in black and white, don't worry about red, green, or blue. Those don't matter. We can move on and go to the black and white panel. It's right below it. And this is usually where you have your HSL or hue, saturation, and luminance. It's been replaced by a black and white tab. Now, I want you to look at my lips right here that are red. If I take the red slider, as you can see, the slider actually affects the luminance of that color. The slider dictates what shade of gray each color is. And this is where you start getting really creative. So we're just gonna work through this rather quickly. Feel free to copy my numbers. So the red is face, so we're gonna take that down, maybe negative 31. Orange, we're gonna take down, as you can see, that's the whole face, we don't wanna do that. We'll go negative 13, looks pretty good. We do want contrast on the face. This is an edgier type of image. The yellow affects only a little bit of my hair and the cigarette. So we can just take that negative 23 because we'll make the cigarette pop out later, which it's a CBD prop cigarette for photography. I don't smoke. Green isn't even in the image, so it doesn't matter where we take it. Aqua isn't in the image, doesn't matter where we take it. Blue affects the background and a little bit of the jacket, so it does matter. We're gonna take the blue positive 14. There's a little bit of purple in the background, so we're as well just gonna take that positive 14, 15. And then there's no real magenta in the image, so it, it doesn't matter. Again, there we go. We literally just flew through another tab. Okay, so we're actually almost done with color. The last place we're going to mess with our color grading is actually below it in the color grading tab. This tab can be exceptionally overwhelming when you're editing in color, but luckily since we're in black and white, we do not need to worry about the wheels. We're only going to be changing the slider under it. So the first wheel is mid-tones, as you can see. That is all of the gray that's in between the highlights and the shadows. We're gonna take that plus seven, and if you're wondering where, if you look above the wheel, you'll see a number changing. That's your number. The shadows we wanna actually take down. We wanna start darkening out these shadows of this. We'll go maybe negative four, nothing too crazy. That looks really good. For the highlights, I think we'll go plus 10 to start getting a little bit of light back on the skin. I'm not sure what the balance does. Uh, it looks like it just darkens and lightens a little. We're gonna go plus 20 on the balance, give it a little bit of pop of light. All right. The remaining tabs are detail. So by default, the sharpening is set to 40. I want you to back that down to nine. Here's why. We're gonna add sharpening later to the parts we want sharpened. Right now, if you sharpen the whole image, it's just gonna be my pores and it's not gonna be very flattering. So let's take the sharpening down to eight or nine and then we'll add sharpening in all the right places later. The next tab is lens correction. By default, this should as well be on. If not, feel free to turn it on. We're gonna crop the photo at the end so we don't need the transform tab. Same goes for effects. We don't need grain or a vignette. And lucky for you, uh, we don't need to do camera calibration today. For the real photo nerds like me out there, just know that if you come into camera calibration and start messing with these sliders, it's how you affect the actual uh, the, the skin pigment itself. It's one of my secret weapons for color and we'll get into that in another video, but just know it's here. Okay, we are done with color. Now for the final step, finishing. This is the really, really fun part and this is where you can, this is where you see a difference. Now finishing does not mean just clicking save. Finishing is actually the final little details like texture. Texture is what makes black and white images come alive. 
My friends, black and white images are in fact only two things. They are light and they are textures. And we've mastered the light, it's done. All we have left is textures. The first texture in this image I want to enhance is the jacket. Like look at this incredible jacket, all of this texture in there, it's sharp. Let's make it sharper. So we're gonna go here to our masking tool and then we're gonna click brush. And all we're going to do is start coloring on the jacket and you can see there's a red overlay that lets you know where you've colored. I'm going to take texture all the way to 100 and I'm going to take clarity to 50. This is really going to make that jacket pop. And I will color in the rest of the jacket. I just wanted you to see what that actually looked like. Paying extra attention not to get it on the skin but to get it on all of the fabrics evenly. Man, that's already like, that is already a massive pop right there before, after. The next texture I'm gonna go after is facial hair. I want it to look really sharp. If we printed this on metal, I want you to see each and every individual hair as if it was 3D. To do that, we're gonna go back to our masking tool. We're gonna click the plus button to get a new brush layer. And here we're going to bring the sharpness up to 20 and we're gonna bring the texture as well all the way to 100, but no clarity. Clarity will mess up your skin. And we're just going to paint that over my facial hair right here. And you can see a huge difference. And we are going to then grab an eraser because I was a little sloppy. Look at how razor sharp each and every hair is. This is exactly what we wanted. While we have this tool, we can actually zoom in and do the eyes as well. I'm just gonna get the actual part around my eyes with the exact same brush. I'll even make the brush a little bigger by taking two fingers and swiping up on the mouse pad. Get my eyebrows, done, done deal. We only have one layer left and it's a massive layer that will make a huge difference. The coolest part about this type of photography is always that super contrasty smoke and edge light. We're gonna make a new adjustment layer with this little plus sign here. And what we're going to do is take the clarity to 100 and the sharpness to like, let's say five. You don't wanna overdo it. You'll make it grainy. And then we are going, look what it does to the smoke. It makes it come alive. The smoke, the cigarette, I'm even gonna make it bigger and do the smoke in the air. So it's like that. I don't wanna to touch the hair. I think that'll make, it'll look too much. But here's something cool. Do you see the side of the hand right here? Watch what happens when I apply this brush to the side of the hand. Do you see how you get that super dramatic light on the back of the hand, the back of the arm and the sleeve itself? This is the photo we were looking for. We started here and now we are here. The last thing that I would do is crop this image. So I click crop and choose four by five. If you're putting it on Instagram, that's the size. And then just click O on your keyboard to toggle between all the different framings. Find one that you really like. I think that looks cool. Done. And there you have it. We have completed this image from start to finish. So save this video to a playlist, send it to a friend, send it to your own phone, anything so that you can find it again and reference it whenever you need it. The last thing you're gonna wanna do is save this as a preset so you don't ever really have to go through the whole thing again. And with that, I wanna thank you guys for joining me here today. I hope this helped you on your photo editing journey. If it did, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. We make these every single week. And if you're a photographer who's not really taking photos at the moment, try carrying your camera with you every day and I promise that will change instantly. You never know what you're gonna create and you never know what you're gonna find. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.